NASA now. Whenever something is transported to the International Space Station, it's called a payload. We're going to see what it takes to get experiments and supplies on board the International Space Station. And why are Legos heading to space? We'll tell you what astronauts are going to do with this very unusual payload. That's ahead. First, here's what's happening at NASA now. <laughs> NASA has reached an important milestone for the next U.S. transportation system that will carry humans into deep space. The system will be based on designs originally planned for the Orion Crew Exploration Vehicle. Those plans will now be used to develop a new spacecraft known as the Multipurpose Crew Vehicle. The spacecraft will carry four astronauts for 21-day missions and be able to land in the Pacific Ocean. The spacecraft will have a pressurized volume of 690 cubic feet with 316 cubic feet of habitable space. It is designed to be 10 times safer during ascent and entry than its predecessor, the Space Shuttle. Now, let's take a look at the past. March 8, 2001, the Payload Operations Center went online as the science command post for the space station. It links Earth-bound researchers with their experiments or payloads in orbit. Approximately 248 miles above us right now, the International Space Station is conducting experiments brought on board as payloads. Here to tell us more about the supply and science payloads is Katie Presson. To get a payload ready to operate on the International Space Station can take a long time. Once the payload developers develop an idea, they'll bring it to POIC here in Huntsville. And we'll start work with their payload team to develop procedures, We'll develop plans to operate it on the space station. We'll help the payload team uh, train the crew. Progress HTV and ATV are all types of vehicles that are sent into space on some type of rocket, and they carry all the things that the crew will need to live and work on the International Space Station, including the payloads, which we uh, which we use that term as our science experiment. One of the experiments we have on board is a camera that will take pictures of fields here on Earth that are growing crops and enable the farmers to better to respond to the condition on Earth uh, for their crops. We're sending some Legos up for the crew to play with, but what they're actually going to be doing with the Legos is assembling them for educational activities. They'll assemble an international space station, a shuttle, a satellite, things of that nature. And then uh, as students here on Earth, you'll be able to watch video of the crew assembling the Legos and then hear the crew talk about different aspects of living and working in space. If we want to do longer duration missions, um, we need to understand better how our body reacts in space and bringing up live insects is a good way to learn a lot about how the insects adjust to space. On the previous shuttle flights, we sent butterflies into space. They actually started off as caterpillars, so we um, got to watch them build their cocoons and then also uh, emerge as butterflies. Robonaut 2 just launched on ULF-5. It's the first humanoid robot that we have on the International Space Station. Its dexterity, uh, fingers, arms move much like a human. Robonaut will, will begin manipulating switches, moving things on the board. He'll eventually uh, be there to aid the crew in everyday activities or possibly do some things that we might not want the crew to do because it might be a little more dangerous. For experiments operating on the space station, there are a lot of safety precautions taken because it's microgravity. For example, if you had a water spill here on the ground, it would just fall to the ground. But on space, if water is exposed to microgravity, it floats around, which can be harmful to hardware or to the crew. What's cool about 
about our jobs is we uh, get to interface with the crew on a daily basis and make sure that the scientists here on Earth get the results from their science experiments on space station. It's a very rewarding job um, in that aspect. <laughs> Did you know that for 10 years, the Payload Operations Center team at the Marshall Space Flight Center has supported more than 1,100 experiments aboard the International Space Station? That equals 6,000 hours of science experiments conducted by 41 Space Station crew members. Now you know. Now it's time to check out what's up. Check out this image, a family portrait of 20 new comets discovered by the WISE mission. NASA's Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer mapped the entire sky in infrared light. This collage shows those 20 new comets together in a cosmic portrait. Teachers, here's a great project you and your class can enjoy. Discover how your students can be part of an actual mission that is currently happening on board the International Space Station. Click on bioedonline.org and start your spider science. Well, that's it for NASA Now. We'll see you next season for a whole new round of programs on NASA Now. <laughs>